And he's now doing science looking at kidneys and the excretory system. So the science understanding we're going to look at in animals, the excretory system is responsible for the removal of wastes, describe the structure and function of nephrons in the kidney, and explain the importance of filtration and reabsorption. So let's talk about the excretory system. So the job of the excretory system is to get rid of wastes. Now there are many aspects to the excretory system and many organs and structures are from many different systems contribute to the excretory system. So for example, lungs are an excretory organ because they help get rid of waste. In this case, the waste is carbon dioxide. But we're going to focus on what's often referred to as the urinary system. Often the urinary system and the excretory system, those terms are used interchangeably. Um, in the urinary system, blood is filtered to remove waste products, and that's what we're going to focus on today. So in your body, you break down proteins, and part of that process involves you breaking down amino acids that contain nitrogen. So your body needs to get rid of that waste nitrogen, and in humans, we get rid of it in this compound here called urea. So different animals use different compounds to get rid of their waste. Fish, for example, use ammonia, which has one nitrogen, and birds use uric acid, which has uh, three nitrogens. So your kidneys help to filter out this waste product from protein breakdown called urea, but they also balance water in your body and also get rid of excess salt too. So your kidneys do a few jobs. So we're going to look at the structure of the urinary system now. Some of these parts we haven't looked at yet, but they will make sense later on. So the first bit we're looking at is the blood going into the kidneys, and that comes from the aorta. So the aorta is a big artery, it comes directly from the heart, uh, it has high pressure blood, and that high pressure blood goes into the two renal arteries to go to the uh, right and left kidneys. The renal vein takes the blood out of the kidneys, and that drains into the big vein that goes back to your heart called the vena cava. In terms of the kidney structure itself, um, we can see here the renal artery and veins. So the renal artery goes in, the renal vein comes out, um, the other structures you can see, the cortex, which is the outside of the kidney, the med medulla. I've heard it said medulla, but it's pronounced medulla, which is the inside part of the kidney here, and then the renal pelvis. So this is where the filtration happens in the cortex and medulla, and the urine that's produced passes into the pelvis. That urine then travels down this tube called the ureter into the bladder, and then from the bladder into the urethra, and then the outside world when you go to the toilet and drop a number one. The part of the kidney that does the job of filtration and reabsorption is called the nephron. Um, each kidney can have about a million nephrons present. The number of nephrons depends on a few different factors, but it's around, we say normally about a million nephrons per kidney. And they're microscopic, you can't see them with the eye. The structure of the nephron, there's lots of parts to it, so we'll go through that briefly now. The blood coming into the nephron travels into this from an arteriole into a bed of capillaries called a glomerulus. Capillaries are leaky, so under high pressure, some of the fluid is pushed out of those capillaries and is captured by this structure called Bowman's capsule. So that's picking up the substances that are pushed out of the blood. The capillary continues around and follows the, uh, the rest of the nephron. Um, and this is where reabsorption happens, and we'll talk about that shortly. From the Bowman's capsule, we have what's called the proximal convoluted tubule. Like I said, it's a really long tube, so proximal just means near, convoluted means wandering or going all over the place, and tubule because it's a small tube. It then goes around this loop called the loop of Henle. There's a descending limb and an ascending limb. Descending means going down, ascending means going up. And then there's the distal convoluted tubule. Distal, distant, means far away. Again, convoluted, wandering all over the place. And then into the collecting duct drains what's left over, which is called the urine. And that's where your urine comes from. This then goes to the pelvis of the kidney and then drains through the ureter to the bladder. So like I said, the job of the kidney is to filter the blood. Um, we have this high pressure blood flowing into the glomerulus, and the small components of blood get pushed out into Bowman's capsule. Now, not all the blood gets pushed out, only small things that can pass between the gaps in the capillary. So things like urea, which is very small, water, which is small, small salts, which are just ions, glucose, which is getting a bit bigger, it's, a, it's lots of atoms joined together, but it's still reasonably small, amino acids, again, fairly small, and also very small proteins, they can be pushed out from the blood into the Bowman's capsule. They'll then travel along the, the tubule and we'll get some reabsorption of the, some of those um, products. The reason for that is your body still needs a lot of those things that are being filtered out. Your body needs glucose. It's, that's the sugar that your cells run on. Your body needs salts. Your body needs water. Um, your body needs amino acids. Your body doesn't need urea. That's a waste product and that's what you're trying to get rid of. 
um, your body doesn't need all the water that's being kicked out as well. So this is where we get water balance happening, which we'll talk about later. Now, the large things in the blood, they're too big to be pushed out of the capillaries. So red blood cells, white blood cells, um, and larger proteins, they shouldn't be filtered out. So if they're present in the urine, this is a good sign that something is wrong with your health. So down here we can see some of those components that are getting filtered out. So here we have in the blood, and here we have in the filtrate. So here we have, uh, these are salt ions, so they're um, about the same as they are in the blood as they are in the filtrate, because they're being pushed out. Glucose, again, that's getting filtered out, so it's the same on both sides. Albumin is a big protein, this shouldn't make it through. So here we have some albumin on this side, and over here we don't have any. Down here we have uh, your white blood cells and red blood cells, and again, they shouldn't be able to be pushed through. Finally, we have osmolality. This is a measure of the concentration of salts in water, and again, that's the same on both sides. So as the filtrate passes along the tubule, we get reabsorption of the substances that your body still needs. So they're reabsorbed back into the capillaries that are following the tubule around. Most of the water also diffuses back in, only about 1% of the water makes its way through to the collecting duct. The presence of substances that should be reabsorbed um, in the urine is a good sign that there's something wrong with your health. So we're going to watch in this video what happens with both the filtration and the reabsorption of the substances from the blood. So at the start we're going to have urea, glucose, water, protein and sodium. So let's see what happens at Bowman's capsule. So we'll come into the capillary and... Oh, okay, so we'll pause it there. So we saw the protein came in, it did a bit of a loop around the capillary, uh, it continued on through that arteriole. So the protein will stay in, um, in the blood because it's too big to be filtered out. However, the glucose we have here, um, urea, water and sodium, they pass into the convoluted, proximal convoluted tubule. So now let's see if we get some reabsorption happening. So play. Alright, so here, I'm going to pause it here. We can see that from what was happening in the proximal convoluted tubule, we got some reabsorption. So the glucose got reabsorbed, the sodium got reabsorbed, and some water got reabsorbed. Now not all of the sodium and water got reabsorbed, just some of them. Okay, so now our filtrate doesn't contain any glucose, but it still has, if we look through here, water, uh, urea down here, and uh, sodium, so that's our salt. So it passes on, keeps on going. We get some more water, uh, sodium coming out in the loop of Henley, um, and we get some more water coming out too. And now let's see what happens as they pass into the collecting duct. So here they go into the collecting duct. And again, we have some water being reabsorbed. And what's passing through as urine is our urea, our waste product we're trying to get rid of, our water, so some of the water that was um, filtered through, and also some of the salt that was filtered through. And there they go. Let's talk about homeostasis. So the idea of homeostasis is that you want your body to stay around about the same inside and out um, to keep you healthy. So this involves things like your body temperature. Um, it involves things like the amount of oxygen in your blood. So you want to keep that the same, or otherwise you'll get into trouble. In terms of the urinary system, the kidneys are very important because they help balance the amount of water that's in your body. If you have too much water, that can be bad. If you have too little water, that can be bad. So the kidneys help to manage the amount of water that you have. So let's say you drink two liters of water in 10 minutes. You'll get a whole heap of water going into your body. That will dilute down things like salt and sugars and amino acids in your blood, and that can be quite dangerous. So your body needs to get rid of that excess water, and it does that through the kidneys. You also sweat out water, and you also breathe out water vapour, but in terms of getting rid of uh, large volumes of water quickly, that happens through your kidneys. If you don't have enough water in your body, this can be bad too. So if you get dehydrated, your body needs to hold on to as much water as it possibly can. And again, this is moderated through the kidneys. So the control of the amount of water in your body is done by a hormone called antidiuretic hormone. So a diuretic makes you wee a lot, so an antidiuretic stops you from weeing. So it's also called vasopressin, that's another name for it. So let's say you go to the movies and you eat a lot of popcorn. Popcorn has a lot of salt in it. Your body will need a lot of water to try and dilute out the salt that you're taking into your body. So what will happen is blood flowing through your brain passes by a part of the body called the hypothalamus, and that detects the level of uh, salt in your blood. If you have too much salt, then your body needs more water. So your hypothalamus releases antidiuretic hormone. That goes to your kidneys. Once the hormone wakes its way to the kidneys, that causes the kidneys to increase the amount of reabsorption of water. So the urine that makes its way into the collecting duct, lots of water is absorbed from that, so that what's coming out and going into the renal pelvis and then the bladder has low amounts of water and higher amounts of salt. The way that it does this is if the hormone causes these channels in the collecting duct to open up. 
They're called aquaporins. Aqua means water, porins means hole. So these are water holes, so more water comes out of the collecting duct and goes back into the capillaries. What that means is what's coming down the end is you get a small volume of highly concentrated urine, so it keeps the water in your body rather than losing it through your urine. So let's say you drink your two litres of water. So now rather than producing antidiuretic hormone, your body reduces the amount of antidiuretic hormone that's produced. This closes off those aquaporins, which means more water passes through the collecting ducts and then into the bladder. So you're producing more dilute urine and you're getting rid of that water that way. So there's many factors that will influence how much water your kidneys need to get rid of. If you do a lot of exercise and you sweat a lot, you'll be losing water from your skin and you won't be needing to lose it uh, via your kidneys. So your kidneys will redirect the water back to your blood if you're doing a lot of exercise. So that means you'll produce very concentrated urine. Caffeine and alcohol can use you, cause you to urinate more. So that means you lose water from your body. One thing with alcohol is when you consume it, you're normally consuming large amounts of liquid and that can increase the amount of water in your body that you need to get rid of. But also alcohol bro blocks the production of antidiuretic hormone. So your urine doesn't get concentrated and that means you need to go to the bathroom more. Uh, in diarrhea, you'll be losing water from your digestive system. So again, you'll be losing water from one area of the body. So you need to try and retain that and that's done through the uh, kidneys. If you drink too much water, this can be bad for the body as well because you dilute down the salts and that can cause uh, problems with your brain. Um, there's this thing called osmosis where water moves to salty areas. Um, inside your brain cells, you have salt. If you have lots of water going past and it's not of the right concentration, the water will go into your brain cells and that can cause the cells to explode. And that could be quite bad. Key thing is when you're drinking water, you should only drink water when you're thirsty. You don't need to drink it all the time. We have this chart down here. This is for children. Um, it's saying uh, for every 25 kilos, you need to take one litre. Now, I weigh 90 kilos, so that's close to 100. That means I should be drinking four cups of, uh, four litres of water a day. That is too much. Um, the old recommendation of two litres of water a day, that doesn't really apply because you get most of that water from the food that you take in. So when you feel thirsty, drink water. So the last thing we need to mention is your kidneys are an exchange service. They're taking in and exchanging out substances. So because of that, they have all the features of the other exchange surfaces that we've been looking at. So in the nephrons, which is where the exchange is occurring, we have a thin membrane. So the distance for these substances to travel is very low. The wall of the capillaries in the glomerulus is one cell thick. The wall of the Bowman's capsule is one cell thick. So it's very easy for the material to pass through. There's water everywhere. These are moist surfaces both on either side of the capillary and of the capillary and Bowman's capsule and inside the tubule, but also to the capillaries on the outside. So there's water everywhere. We're exchanging water-soluble materials, so we need to have water present. There's a large surface area. The tubules, particularly the proximal convoluted tubule, has microvilli, which we saw when we looked at the uh, villi in the intestines. So the microvilli increase the surface area, so we have a lot more area over which uh, exchange can occur. So the reabsorption can occur quicker because we have these microvilli that have a, a large surface area for that you know, absorption to happen over. The last thing is the kidneys have a large blood supply. So 20% of the blood from the aorta goes directly to the kidneys. So what that means is for every heartbeat, 20% of that blood is going to the kidney. So there's a high blood pressure and a lot of blood going through. So the blood is, lots of blood is getting filtered and lots of reabsorption is happening back into the blood. So there's a really large blood supply going to your kidneys. So now for the science, we looked at your kidneys and the excretory system. That's it for the science today. See ya. <laughs>